Greetings everyone, welcome to the channel. In this Diablo 3 video, we're going to be talking about the Darkening of Tristram event, how you can access it, what rewards you can get for completing it, and a bunch of other tips and tricks along the way. So make sure you stay all the way till the end so you can soak up as much information about this special limited time event as possible. Now this event started on December 31st and will run till January 31st of 2023. So if you want to participate and claim your stake in getting the exclusive rewards that can only be found in this event, now is the time to do so. As of the time recording this video, you have about roughly five days left to complete this event and I will be giving you tips and tricks along the way. So yeah, like I said earlier, man, it's going to be a good video and I hope you all enjoy and uh, we'll kind of get into it. So how you access the Darkening of Tristram event is you're going to want to go to Act 1 and it's going to be in the Old Ruins. So it'll have a pentagram logo next to it which says the Darkening of Tristram which will be how you kind of know where to go but we're going to show you exactly where it's at in the Old Ruins. So we already got a portal. Coming from the teleporter you're just going to go directly down to the left and you're going to see the portal which is simply named Tristram. Now this is... Um, Accessed via portal in old tr the ruins of Tristram next to the fountain is only accessible in adventure mode. The zone itself is simply named Tristram, and all 16 levels of the dungeon are labeled Labyrinth. Now quickly, while we're going into this portal here, we're going to quickly run down the rewards. So, rewards for completing the dungeon include the banner elements for killing all four bosses, which are the Dark Lord, Archbishop, Lazarus, the Skeleton King, and the Butcher, as well as you get the pets, which are the Butcher itself, modeled after the Butcher, obtained for clearing Anniversary Dungeon with a fresh character in one go, must be done in a single player mode. You also get the Royal Calf, obtained through a semi-secret event line. The transmogged weapons are the Butcher's Cleaver and the Wart's Leg, which are pretty awesome. And you'll also get two portrait frames, one which is modeled after angelic and demonic versions of the life and mana orbs. And players require the player portraits require the player to kill every single unique monster 40 in total and collect all the cultist pages. So we'll kind of give the rundown of that stuff. You'll notice the graphics look a lot different. Um, they are the original Diablo um graphics which i think look cool but uh here's how you kind of get some of the royal calf stuff right here you're going to kind of press all these cow bodies and then we're going to add something to this cauldron here in a little bit so we're going to run up here we're going to get a couple of ingredients to add to that cauldron and we're going to make ourselves the there's one of the uh one of the transmogs right there the fine tsunami blade so inside there is the first part which will lead down into the uh the labyrinth there it's gonna gotta make sure we clear everything, kind of get everything explored here. For those of you who haven't played this before, it's pretty cool. I like how they brought back the old graphics to kind of make me feel like I'm playing, you know, the original Diablo and kind of Diablo 2 era of gaming here. We are obviously using the uh, the Insight set, which is the modded Ina's Mantra set. We are playing on seasonal to show you that you can do this on seasonal as well as non-seasonal. Just has to be in adventure mode, so. If you want to part participate in this make sure you play it in adventure mode and if you want to go for that one challenge of running through the whole entire thing make sure you are in single player um don't do it in multiplayer otherwise you won't get it so that was lab Earth level one we'll go on to lab Earth level two we'll kind of do full clears of these entire zones so we can make sure to kill all the bosses so this video might be a little bit longer but it honestly shouldn't take too long so just for using the modified armor and weapons and stuff like that so yeah, we got we got the soul shard infused ethereal, uh, not ethereal, but technically they are ethereal because of the ethereal affixes. But you know what I mean. Go inside here. This is going to be the first boss, which is the butcher, and he drops the butcher's cleaver there, which is the first unique transmog weapon that you can unlock for completing that. So that's how you find the butcher. He's going to be on the labyrinth level two, and he's just going to be right down that first path right there on the the left. So. That'll be the first um, semi, I would call it a semi boss. It's not really like a difficult enemy by, enemy by any means, but that's why I want to make sure you do 100% clears of these areas so you don't miss any of the bosses. Because if you want to get some of these challenges unlocked, you are going to need to kill all of those bosses. So just make sure you do that. They're not very hard, especially if you're using mods. They're even really easy if you're using just, you know, like uh, I'd say. Um, just like if you're playing on Torment 16 with a semi good build, you're going to be able to easily breeze through this. Um, no problems at all. So we'll kind of run through here. 
kind of do Labyrinth level 3 here. We're out of, uh, out of spirit, man. God, we're going so fast. It's freaking blowing my mind. Yeah, I just, I love, I love this event. I wish they would keep it as, like, a semi-permanent event, but I get why it's a limited time event. It's just to cor correlate with the anniversary of, uh, the Diablo releases, so that's kind of why it's only a limited time thing, but kind of go through here. Make sure we do a full clear of this area. Oh, we missed a zone down there. Let's go clear that out real quick. Let me know what y'all think about this event, though. Y'all like the graphics? Alright, so we got an option here. We can proceed with Labyrinth level 4, or we can go up here and we can go into the King Leoric's tomb. And we're going to go ahead and do this so we can kill the, uh, the Skeleton King. Which I believe he resides here in uh, the King Leoric's tomb here. So go ahead and uh, annihilate the uh, King Leoric here, the Skeleton King. I think he's dead. There we go. We got the Undead Crown, which is the second piece of armor right there for the unique transmogs, which is pretty awesome. So we got two, I believe, out of the four, because you get one for killing each of the semi-bosses. So that was the area right there on Labyrinth Level 3, and that's going to be from the spawn. You're going to want to work your way over to the left and then turn left again and make sure you head up that... Uh, that chamber there to get the uh, undead crown moving our way down into labyrinth level four now we're gonna go ahead and do a full clear again of this so you guys can see where everything resides at where you can find everything this is so much easier with mods i remember the first time i did this it took me freaking forever i was playing with my legit necro i think it was a uh, bones of rathma build and I could push like Greater Rift level 80s or something like that, but it wasn't by any means like a perfect build. There was no Primal Ancients. I hadn't even unlocked Primal. I think I had just recently unlocked Primal Ancients. I might have had like one or two, but not any for my build. So it was a lot more difficult than this is right now. Um, yeah, it, it was. Uh, it took me like probably I'd say 45 minutes to an hour to complete this whole entire event here. But I did get the uh, the solo player achievement, which was pretty awesome, so I was pretty happy with that. Labyrinth level 5 is probably my uh, my least favorite because it adds in these gosh dang doors. I just, I do not like these doors, man. Especially when they're in greater risks and you're trying to push for like leaderboard times. They're literally the most annoying thing. I think, we're, I think we did a full clear of this, but let's just go up here and make sure because there's a little area to the left there. I don't want to miss anything, man. We got we got to get 100% clear. There we go. Yeah, we didn't miss anything. We're all good. Oh, we got a legendary though. We get some guy got some gloves. I wonder what they're wonder what they're going to be. Should we, should we identify them? See? Gladiator and Gauntlets. Let's go, man. Let's go. I'll take that. I'll take that. All right, here is one of the cultist pages, the Book of Blood. So here's where we need to unlock these doors using a specific mechanism here. So we're going to put this bloodstones. You get these little bloodstones, that's how you open up the doors. So um, let's see. Oh, I want to put this bloodstone. Let's put it. Let me grab it. Why is it not letting us go? Why is it not letting us go? Oh, come on now, man. You do not have a bloodstone. Well, isn't that apparent? Isn't that apparent? There we go. We got a bloodstone now. Okay. Well, let's go. Put our bloodstone here. There we go. The armor rack. Arcane's valor. Weapon racks there. Was that a crude god grandfather flail there? I forgot about this little uh, bloodstone area over here. Pretty sure there's a boss at the end of this, so you don't wanna you don't wanna skip through this part. No, I might have been tripping. I don't think there was a boss over there, but we cleared it though. 100% cleared this area. I wonder if I can go around from the edge here. Nope, it ain't gonna let me. It ain't gonna let me go. All right, that's fine. We still got a 100% clear, so let's find our way back. Magic rock. There we go. Okay. Okay. Look at that. Dropping hella stuff. 
That's why, man, that's why I like doing this event, though, because if you're playing, especially playing on Torment 16, you can get some pretty good rewards, man. Um, all the items are going to be magic quality, though, like the, uh, the freaking Butcher's Cleaver, the Undead Crown, stuff like that, you know what I mean? But still, though, like, we got mods to make it legendary, so if you really want it legendary, I'll make you, like, a prim I'll, I'll put a Primal Ancient version out there, man, and make it, make it super OP, so here we go. We're on the Labyrinth level 3 now. Working our way, working our way through, slaying everything. Man, I freaking love this insight build so much. It's so freaking fun. You can just go, you can just zoom around. It's freaking awesome. Kind of want to go back to that area. I think it's gonna have us go up here. So we'll have to make sure we go back and hit that, hit that area, hit that area up. I think this is leading us toward the exit here. Now see, now this is what I would call a labyrinth here. With all these freaking doors, it's like a maze. Alright, there's level 7, so we'll go back. Make sure we get, kind of clear this area up here real quick, and then we'll kind of go back. I know we're backtracking, and I hate backtracking, but we did kind of miss an area over here. That's why it's important, oh god, we need to find the, uh, there we go. Second cultist page book right there. The Cathedral of Bone will go down there in a second. Let's just make sure we get this whole area over here cleared out. That's just gonna loop us back to the beginning again. There we go. Okay, so let's go hit that Cathedral of Bone. Pretty sure this area is pretty big as well. I've seen so many Greater Rifts that are modeled after this level right here. I never knew that there were bones on the ground. I just thought it was like, you know, I don't know. I didn't think there were like literally like piles of bones though. So there we go. We cleared out the chamber of bones. Sorry, I was saying cathedral of bone, I believe. It's the chamber of bone. All right, now let's work our way to the next area. That's why I love using the monk when I'm running through this event because you get dashing strike and dashing strike is the best number one high powered mobility skill in the entire game. I don't think there's a, literally a skill that can beat this. Besides maybe using the Courage set with uh, the Barbarian and then, you know, just uh, rocking that. There we go, we just killed another boss there. What did he drop? He dropped the... Was that the Staff of the... Archangel's Staff of the Apocalypse. Let's go! Another item, then we also got this. I don't think that's uh, I don't think that's part of the event there, but we'll drop that. So that was another boss. I didn't get to see what he, he was because we killed him so fast. But another unique mob there. Yeah, a lot of these items though, we can modify them in the editor. So if you don't complete this event in its entirety, and uh, you know, I'll probably make up the the weapons and armor and pieces and stuff like that. We do have some of them already, like the butchers. Cleaver, I believe we have as a modified, I don't know if it's modified, but we definitely have it for the transmog pack. I don't think it's modified though. So yeah, if you want to get through all these areas, it's going to make you pick up all of these cultist pages. So either way, you're going to grab them all, which is going to be, you know. So if you really do go and explore every area of this event, you're going to get that seven pages to get you that portrait frame. So, which is pretty nice. Like how they do that, they don't make it like super hard to find, you know what I mean? Oh, this is like that, uh, there's an area in Diablo 2 like this where it's completely like blacked out and you gotta like find your way in the dark. Are we missing the door? There we go. Alright, this is the Halls of the Blind here. I think we 100% cleared that, there's a little chest there. The Optic Amulet! Oh man, I'm so glad we got this. This is uh, can only be obtained in this area as well as in the Dark Interest Room event, but we do have it modified. I'll show you guys when we get back to town if I remember. Let's see what else we got here. Insightful... Wait, did we not pick that up? Let's just go ahead and pick up all this stuff because I want to see this stuff here. So yeah, you can get all this stuff from chests as well. That looks pretty cool, magic pole arm. I'm just like, I just love looking at magic items. I don't know why, I don't know what's wrong with me, but I just, I just love it, you know what I mean? Like, I don't ever hardly see magic items. All I see is primals or set primals or, you know, stuff like that when you're, when you're modifying items. It cannot be done. I did make a magic uh, set once for, it was for my birthday in 2022. I made a magic only uh, set, which I thought was pretty cool. 
and it was like an exclusive thing. You could only request it on that one day. All right, Lab Nerd level eight. So at the end of this, we're gonna be able to fight the old Diablo, which is pretty cool. The enemies will get progressively stronger, I believe, as you work your way down in these uh, in these levels here. But you won't have to worry about that if you're using mod modded items. You're gonna be able to easily clear all of this. No problemos. Oh, do we miss? Did we miss something there. Oh, there's another boss. What did he drop? King Sword of Haste, which is another one of those uh, unique unique items. A lot of these I know from using the editor. I'll be like, you know, King Sword of Haste, and it'll have like patch two point. Uh, it's, I don't know, two point three point one. I don't I don't know exactly the patch off the top of my head, but I'll be like, hey, what's that? You know, and I'll put it on like some uh, characters as like a visual layer. Because some of these items I think look really, really cool. And I like how the only way to get some of these items is by playing this event or modifying your game save files. But I'd rather, you know, get them legitly. But I do like when you modify them, you can make them any rarity. So, like, normally they'd be, like, magic items. And then you can make them, you know, primal ancient legendaries, you know, which is pretty cool. So, I like that. I want I really want to find the Archon Plate of the Whale. Because I believe that's in here as well, which is pretty cool. I like that armor. I like the name of it. We are rocking the royal calf pet because uh, why not, you know? Go ahead and get all these ancient tomes. There's a musty tome there. Archangel Staff of the Apocalypse. We got that again. There we go. Kind of want to make that into a really, really good weapon, that Archangel Staff of the Apocalypse. I love the name of it, you know? Alright, let's go ahead and go down to... The next area, which is Labyrinth level 9. I don't remember exactly off the top of my head how many Labyrinth levels there is, but, uh, slain hero. Oh, man. Somebody killed a hero down here. Eight holes. Why are you killing my heroes, man? Let's go down here. I don't know why I hit that. We're at 20k Paragon. We don't need the XP, but I hit the XP. I don't know. Every time I see a shrine or a pylon, I just immediately spam the interact button on there. I don't know. I, I love clicking stuff, man. Okay, that was 100% cleared. Let's go check up here to the left. Make sure we clear everything because we don't want to miss a single single piece of gear or a single item. There's the black mushroom. We need to add that to the the rot mushroom. We need to add that to the to the cauldron to get the royal calf pet. I'm going to kind of I kind of remember vaguely how to obtain all of the items for that. I'm pretty sure we missed something in the cathedral though, or like in Labyrinth level one or two, because there's like three pieces you have to add. I think it's Leoric Shin, but it's just kind of the same as, uh... hey, Griswold's Edge, there we go, you guys. We got Griswold's Edge, another one of those unique weapons. Hell yeah, love it, love it. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to go and make all of these uh, legendary primal ancients now that I'm playing this again now that I now that I'm getting all of these items I kind of want to make them in their in the in the best form possible I might even make them soul shard I might even sanctify them that would be pretty cool let me know if y'all want me to sanctify them like for you know obviously I'd have to make like one for each class like Griswold's Edge obviously make one for the Barbarian let me know if you guys think that'd be cool or not down in there in the in the comment section and I'll probably I'll probably do that because playing this again yeah, yeah, I'm, de I'm definitely going to do that, but let me know if you guys think I should sanctify them or just keep them in their natural, you know, just primal ancient legendaries with obviously modified affixes because you can do both. I think it would be cool to have some unique uh, modified items here. What's that? King Sword of Haste again? There we go. I don't think we have... Do we have that one? Yeah, we do. We got it already. So yeah, you will have no trouble finding all of the unique transmogged items if you just run through this and kill all the kill all the monsters. You'll pretty much get guaranteed, unless you miss one of the bosses, which is kind of the point of me making this video. I don't want you guys to miss, you know, any of the bosses or anything like that, but honestly, if you just explore every area in its entirety and you don't miss anything, you're going to get guaranteed to, to get all the bosses and unique mobs, which will give you those portrait frames and it'll also give you all of the items. So you kind of get a win-win for exploring. And that's kind of what this game's all about, you know? It's an RPG, action RPG, 
but it's literally like about exploring too, especially if you play the campaign. You know, exploring all the areas, finding secret areas. That's how people find Whimsydale. Like when that first came out, I remember people were losing their freaking minds when uh, they found out how to get to that secret area. It was like the coolest Easter egg. Uh, a lot of people didn't like it because it was like really colorful and stuff like that, but it's literally a joke that the developers made because people were saying Diablo 3 was like too colorful and it didn't look anything like the previous Diablos. And to that I say, you know, like I, I think the Diablo developers had a laugh when they made that level. They knew they knew what they were doing, man. They're, they they took the hate that people were giving their game and they turned it into something positive, which is what I try to do in my own life, so I totally I totally understand, you know, and I think that's pretty cool. Here we go, we're on Labyrinth level 13 here. Remember, I showed this to my brother as well, and he freaking lost his mind. He thought it was the coolest thing ever. He loves, he's a, he's a avid Diablo player as well. He's more into Diablo 2 though, so he really liked the graphics of this. We almost missed all these mobs there. Did we clear this? Yes, we did. Alright, Labyrinth level 14, here we go. So many pylons, man. If we had the Nem Bracers on, we would get like, oh, that would have been such a good idea. Okay, yeah, yeah. If you're gonna run this, make sure you put the Nemesis Bracers or use a follower because, uh, like a modified follower that's using the Nem Bracers because then you'll be able to get a bunch of unique mobs that can only be found in this area because every time you hit a Shiner Pylon, it'll spawn a unique mob pack for you to annihilate. I think there was a unique mob there. Let's see what they dropped, the King Sword of Haste. Seen like a couple of those already. We've gotten probably three or four. All right, I think we completely cleared Labyrinth level 14. We're about to fight the Dark Lord himself, man. I like this version of Diablo that's in here. I think he's really, really cool. All right, I believe. Let's see here, pop this chest. Never know. Uh. Didn't get the Archon Plate of the Whale, man. Really want that. Uh, hey, there we go. We got the Godly Plate of the Whale. Let's freaking go, man. That's what I've been trying to hunt for this entire time. That's, that's all I wanted. I, just, I love the name of it. I used it for my birthday set. I thought it was a cool name. I was like, the whale, man. I, and I, I immediately just thought of like an orca or like a, you know, just like a big ass whale in my head. I don't know. My, my brain's messed up, man. Like. I just I saw a whale and I was like, ooh, orca. I love orcas. Free Willy, man. All right, here we go. We're at the unholy altar. I believe this is where we kill the Dark Lord. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and kill Diablo, man. Kill the Dark Lord. Hopefully we can see him before uh, we we have we have completely annihilate him. So yeah, the only way to get into these areas here is you have to go over to the left and click on the Book of Lazarus, but then we'll kill like the the three mini bosses here. So Archangel Sack of the Apocalypse. Wait, did we kill Diablo already? No way, we killed him already? Oh no, the, that was the final boss there. So let's go ahead and pick up this cool stuff here. I don't know if we got anything cool off there. I don't know, do we? We got the Staff of the Apocalypse. Godly plate of the whale, so we got that. Cool, cool, cool. So we got two plates of the whale now. Awesome. We got the mask of razors, which I don't even think I've ever seen before. I'm definitely gonna modify that because that sounds cool. All right, now sorry, this is where we killed Diablo. Labyrinth level 16. Let's go ahead and open up these doors. Annihilate all the mobs. Hit the door switch. Aw, oh, man, we didn't even get to see Diablo before we killed him. All right, I'm going to let this cutscene roll. I'll be back with you guys in a minute.
All right, guys, that was the end. So at that in that cutscene, what it was depicting it was it was depicting our character inserting the uh, the red soul shard from Diablo, which is what gives Diablo all of his power. So yeah, we kind of uh, inserted it into our our own our own uh, head there, and uh, yeah, we got ourselves the uh, the red soul shard. Now normally, if you don't have the red soul shard already, it would drop after you kill Diablo, which is a legendary gem that's on pretty much every single one of our modified items. And I'll kind of go back to town and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about here. And I'll kind of show you uh, the optic amulet as well. So here's the modified version of that optic amulet. So we do have that. And then uh, that red soul shard there in the middle of the two flawless royal amethyst. That's what your character inserted into his helm. And uh, we do have it on a lot. Every single one of our builds has that because I think it's so cool. It's a, It ejects fire from you. It's really cool. And you'll get it for completing the entire... Um, Darkening of Tristram event, and we did get the uh, rewards there. And uh, oh yeah, let's go back and we'll put the uh, we'll put the stuff in the cauldron, I believe, and we can see if we can get the royal calf to we get the royal calf pet here. So let's go up to the cauldron here, put the rotten mushroom in. I believe we're missing one ingredient though from that. So let's go over here. I think we missed one because we got the rotten mushroom. I go with the witch's brew. I can't remember what you do with the witch's brew now. I can't remember, man. Let me let me see if I can figure out what to do with this witch's brew real quick. I wanted to in the video, but I really want to see if I can remember how to do this. So let's see here. Um, ba 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 ba. I had it written down somewhere. Um, ba 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 ba. So yeah, completing the dungeon also rewards the legendary item Red Soul Shard. It fits in the helm slot, which is awesome. You get the regular magic items are the Archangel Staff of Apocalypse, King Sword of Haste, Godly Plate of the Whale. The quest, quest reward based items are the Ring of Truth from Respondent Chest and Dark Passage on level 2. The Butcher's Cleaver from the Butcher. You get the Undead Crown from the Skeleton King and King Lyric's Tomb. The Harlequin Crest from Snot Spill on level 4. Arcane's Valor after solving a puzzle in level 5. The Empyrean Barrier ban from magic rock on level five optic amulet from respondent chest in the halls of the blind griswold's edge from anvil's fury on level 10 and the veil of steel from lockton's corpse on level 14 so those are all of the different um reward I, uh, that you can get and let's see if we can figure out how to get the the uh the pet here i had it written down i'm just trying to find it I'm sorry, guys. I, f I feel bad, man. I feel I feel really bad. Okay, so here we go. What we need to get this to work is wins here inside the cathedral. Slay the enemies. Okay. Uh, all right. Get inside the caves. Get the black mushroom. Got the rotten mushroom. Head back to town. Interact with the other regions. Call and get the witch's brew. With the witch's brew in hand. Follow the hidden Diablo 3 quest further by taking it to the corpse of Farnham in town to get the drunken Deckard's debt item. Alright, so let's go to town, get the drunken Deckard's debt. So, it should be down here in town. And I believe it's in one of these... Oh, nope. Uh, where is that, man? It's, it's around here somewhere. Uh, it's gotta be... Nope, that's not there. We are. Nope, Pepin's corpse. Nope. Where are you? Where are you, drunken, drunken guy? Is he, is he over? Is he up here? God, where is this guy, man? Where is the drunken dude at? I mean, he's got to be. He's got to be around here somewhere, right? I mean, like, are we missing something? There's Pepin. Bunch of. Dead people. Oh, there we go. Okay, we got the drunkard's debt. All right. Now we need to take that item to the Tristram interpreter, which is Ogden. So where are you at, Ogden? There we go. Okay, we got Garda's letter. All right. Now that we got the Garda's letter, we will take that to the corpse of Pepin, which is Tristram's healer. And then we got the healer's prescription. And last but not least, take the healer's prescription to Griswold to get Wurt's leg during the Diablo 3. So this is the quest line to get Wurt's leg. So let's take it over to Griswold. 
And there we go. Uh, can we not? Can we, can we not talk to him? All right. Um, I think is it maybe because we already have the witch, the word slag already? Is that is that why it's not working? Griswold, give give me the word slag, buddy. Give me, give me it. I need it to complete the Easter egg, man. What are you doing, Griswold? What are you doing, bud? All right. So all right. Well, what's, okay. I'll just, I'll, I'll just keep going with the steps. Once you obtain word slag, you uh, we'll get the Wurtz Leg Weapon Transmog reward for Diablo 3. Along with this reward, it opens up the path to getting the Royal Cow Calf Pet. Okay, so with Wurtz Leg in hand, you can follow the steps. Um, here we go. First off, salvage the Wurtz Leg item to receive the Map of the Stars. Use the item to open it, revealing 2-1-3 sequence. Head to Ardria's Hut in the Darkening of Tristram event area. Here you'll spot some cow corpses. Click on the cow corpses in the sequence revealed by the map on the stars which is middle left right this will open the abandoned farmstead entrance to the right of Ardria's hut enter the area and loot's wort stash right in the middle loot the royal calf pet and some gold for good measure so that is the steps to get the royal calf pet i think it's maybe because we already have the royal calf and that's probably why it's not giving us the wort's leg either better because we already have wort's leg as well so but those are the steps you need to complete all of everything in the darkening of tristram event how to get all of the rewards, how to get all of the stuff, everything from this event. So I hope you all enjoyed, man. If you did, definitely let me know by dropping a like. Sorry, it took me a little bit to get that last uh, parts for the words leg and stuff like that, man. But I hope you all enjoyed, man. And I'd hope to catch you all in a future video coming out soon. Stay safe, stay happy, and last but not least, stay gaming. Lion Gaming Crew, signing out.